Well, I'm standing here near the center line of Orca, where the keel meets the forefoot. So this is what we've been working on right here, and we're going to continue. But uh, before I go on with this, I just want to tell you that we're picking up the V-bottom skiff at the outboard motor place. And, you know, it's going to have a brand new Yamaha outboard motor on it. We're going to go take it for a ride and make some videos. So, you know, it, it's going to be fun for me. I love driving boats like that with a tiller standing up with a tiller. It's not something you see every day anymore except for maybe smaller boats, but it's just something I can't wait to do because, you know, I've anticipated this for years and years, not the few years that you've watched us build this boat, but way, way back I've been thinking about this design and I can't wait to feel it and see how solid it is. You know, see if it shudders or if it you know, it's pounds or what it sounds like in the water. That's just going to be fantastic. I kind of know what it's going to be like, but it's still going to interest me in a big, big way. The next thing we're going to do is get involved with Orca. And uh, we've got the center line going together right here. What we're going to do right now is put a spanner across the scarf right here. We couldn't have made it any longer because of the angle that the two come together like this. You know, if it was going straight, we could make the scarf any length we wanted, but we're limited to this. So what we have to do is strengthen this up, and we're going to put a spanner inside of it that goes along another six by of white oak like that, incredibly strong. And it'll all be bolted right through. This will be bolted through it. This will be bolted through the scarf and through it and then bolt it up here too. That's our next move right there. We're gonna cut that spanner. We're actually just gonna put it up there and trace it. We don't have to be making a pattern or anything like that. I'm back at my drawing board and I wanna show you this piece right here. This is the piece we're putting in right now. I'm calling it a spanner because it spans over the uh, corner right here of the joint between the two pieces. So it's gonna be bolted at the ends and it's going to be bolted right down through the scarf and up close to it like that it's to strengthen this joint right here. And uh, it's going to do a fantastic job. I think that uh, I haven't tried to measure it out yet or do anything about it, but I think some of the frames are actually going to contact that and be notched into that piece right there. Well, let's go out on the floor and I'll show you how I make this piece right here. Well, here we are. I'm going to cut this piece right off the end of this timber. So I'm going to shorten it up quite a bit. So. It'll be a little limited what we can do with that, and uh, we just get the piece we want right here. So I'm going to show you how I go about it without any help. It's not propped up or anything like that. This is the way I would cut a limb off of a tree so that it doesn't rip the bark right down the side of the tree. You start at the bottom, and you cut yourself maybe halfway up before the thing starts to sag. You take your saw out and cut from the top. It sags and pinches the bottom, and then it falls down. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now that I've got it cut, I'm going to he-man it over there into position on top of the keel and forefoot. You know, I'm just going to jockey it around a little bit. I want to make sure I get the most out of it. So, you know, uh, right at that corner on the inside, I want it to cover that corner or yeah. come right to the edge of covering it. A small space is fine, so i got to jockey it around a little bit, make sure it's the right length on both ends. And, you know, I'm probably going to cut the ends, bob the ends off later on just a little bit. And uh, I don't have to cut it with the skill saw with those blocks on the edge to support the saw, anything like that. Because I'm going to take it over to my big bandsaw, my ship saw, and cut it right over there so I can follow the curve, I can do anything I want. And what I'm seeking to do here is get it in the right spot so that I can just trace it underneath there because I don't want to make a pattern or do anything like that. I just want to set it down on there and pretty much know as little about it as I can, trace it and cut it. Well, here is the line that we got. It's, a, it's just a tracement of the uh, joint between this one and that one. So pretty easy to do that. As long as you don't mix up the ends because this one's got a curve in it right here, especially up near this end here because that's going to match the top of the forefoot. This line is straight. If I look at it, it looks straight. 
And yeah, this one looks curved, so that's what we have to do. We have to saw that out on my big ship saw. I'm planing it down, especially on the side, so that when I cut it, it doesn't rock back and forth. Because if it rocks back and forth, it kind of binds on the blade a tiny bit. You know, it makes the cutting a little bit harder to stay on the line. It really won't slow the saw down, but, you know, it would make it much harder to actually follow the line. You, you don't want to have it flip-flapping on the table while you're trying to cut it. And I love using this little plane because it really does what you want it to do. Good enough. Before I cut it, I just want to show you my bandsaw here now. This is a pretty special bandsaw. It's a ship saw, right? So that when you tilt it, you know, the blade tilts instead of the table, like a table saw does, you know. And uh, the only difference between this one and many others is that when you tilt this one, the table slides along with the blade and uh, the blade stays the same exact distance from a fence. My other one, I've got another one a little bit bigger than this. The blade travels in a slot when you tilt it. So it's, uh, it's not quite the same. This one you can do pattern cutting or pattern ripping on it. And uh, the, other one, the other one you can't. So, you know, at, uh, you know this, one's got, this is my baby right here. You'll be seeing a lot of this saw on the build of Orca. I mean, you can use it for all kinds of different things. Deep cuts like this, you know, uh, cross cuts. It's got all kinds of power. You can't even slow it down. It cuts curves, too, because it cuts wide enough. So one of these is a curve, and the other one's straight. So this is the thing to do. I have a resaw bandsaw, but it only cuts straight. You know, there's no way of going around corners with it or anything like that. This one will. You can cut floor timbers with it, deck timbers. This is one example of it right here. We're just cutting a six by. It's a deep cut, and it's curved. I have another bandsaw that will resaw, but you can't cut a curve with it. So this is the thing right here. It's got enough set, so it cuts wider, really, than the blade does. So this is going to be a nice little cut right here. Now, it's got seven and a half horsepower. It doesn't slow down at all. You know, it, it's, uh, it'll cut through anything you put up there. So we'll show you how that's done. Getting started with a cut like this on the ship saw is a little bit shaky, so you have to be very careful getting started. Once you get started, if you step back far enough, you can actually see both sides of the blade, you know, not just one side. And when you can see both sides of it, you, you figure you're lined up. Then you get the line lined up with your eye, obviously, and, and taxi along. The further away you are again, the straighter you go because the movement doesn't uh, amplify so much in the cut so you know this this is pretty nice to be able to do this you can take half the line if you're slow enough and careful enough this is select white oak there really is nothing better in the whole world than white oak you know it's got a reputation of, of being the best there is for ships and all kinds of different things it doesn't rot very easily and it's wicked heavy and strong so this is the stuff right here we're able to get a hold of this and uh, we're lucky we can because anything short of this wouldn't really satisfy me very much. So the cut's coming out pretty nicely actually. You know, I've hit the line a couple times but I haven't taken it away at all. I'll have to plane it down until just the remnants of that line are, uh, can see on both sides. This ship saw is the right saw to be using here because it doesn't hesitate. It cuts nice and straight, really nice and straight. The blade's nice and tight, so it doesn't wander through knots or do anything like that. It just goes perfectly straight. It's as good as you can push it, let's put it that way. Halsey's got it on the other end. Uh, he's just supporting the weight of it. He knows not to pull on it because I got my hands near there, so. You could actually pull it a little too fast. It'll cut four times as fast as that.
Well, now I've got the spanner over here where it belongs. It came out nice, except uh, it's got a couple bumps and lumps in it here and there, so I'm gonna take my little electric planer and smooth those right out of it. And uh, you'll hear it because it'll cut and then not cut and cut and not cut. Same thing on the other side, too. I jacked it up a little bit because otherwise the heel of my planer was banging into this before I could get at it. So that's what you have to do. So here we go. When you're playing in something like this, if you go downhill, you're all set. But if you try to go uphill, it lifts the grain up. No matter how sharp your plane is, that plane is working absolutely perfectly, but you have to plane it downhill. On the other end of it, I'll have to reverse directions. But if you go uphill, no matter what, it'll lift the grain. No matter how sharp your plane is or what, you know, if you try uphill, it lifts the grain up, it makes kind of a messy look about it. It's no weaker, but it doesn't look good. This works really good, downhill always. You'll notice that all the time I'm working on this, I've got it at the right height for myself because I don't really feature crawling around on the floor doing this kind of stuff. I don't have to lean over. See, I'm standing up for every bit of it. That's the plane in it, the fit in it. Actually, it's gonna be up there when I drill it, you know, and join it together. And then, you know, eventually we'll stand it up. You know, I've made all the bumps go away. I got a couple of saw marks left, but I'm gonna leave that alone. And, uh, you know, I can feel it. I can feel it for lumps and stuff. You know, that side's done. Let's bring it over into position and clamp it up and see how it fits. Well, there's our spanner in position right there. And uh, it looks really healthy in there. Look how broad it is. It's gonna add a tremendous amount of strength to this area. You have to put some sort of a spanner across it because of this angle. And uh, you know, maybe somebody might have some crooks or something like that, but this is what you do right here. And uh, it's working out really good. You can see right here the overlap between the forefoot and the keel right there. This spans across it really adds some strength to it. It'll be bolted right through there, right through there, right through there, maybe three of them right in there. Well, one's gonna be up away from that, two more in here, two more in here and one up there. So, you know, it's gonna be bolted together really. And, uh, you know, it's gonna stay nice and tight. It's, it's great that it fits that well right off the uh, uh, planer there. You know, maybe I'll look it over and decide to touch it up here or there, but really, really it doesn't even have to be. So the next thing for us to do on this is join the stem and the forefoot. So th that's going to be kind of cool because it's going to have a gripe in it in here. Another piece that goes right in here. It's like 45 degrees between the two and the thing is bolted to that. I think the reason why they call it that is because a lot of shipwrights really didn't like working in this area right here because it's kind of a questionable co connection if you don't do an awful good job on it. So that, that's where it happens up here. And I might put another one inside of that. So I have to cut these angles and fit them together. Once that's in, we'll be able to push it up. And I'm telling you, that's gonna be a day because it's gonna show how big it really is.